What is up guys, it is RSC6414 here, back with another video. This time I'm reviewing TNA Hardcore Justice 2014 on Spike TV, the free pay-per-view event in which TNA did last month for Destination X, make it a pay-per-view event, which they started doing last year, put it for free on Spike TV. Overall, this show, first time being on Wednesday nights, Overall, I enjoyed it for the most part. There was a crappy ending towards the end I was not too fond of. But it overall did not ruin the whole show for me. But it did kind of put a bad taste in my mouth to end the show. I'll get to that complaint. It's a problem I've had with plenty of wrestling companies have done bullshit endings like this. But let's go and get the view and I'll get to my point at the end. First match we had good match no complaints here you had Bram versus Abyss I mean this was a really good match I enjoyed it for the time it got it delivered stairway to Janice match Janice being the barbed spiked bat that Abyss has Bram took it hostage last week they fought for it back and forth action at one point Abyss got pushed off the ladder through a barbed wire table that was a pretty cool spot then uh, Bram got black hole slammed on a bed of uh, thumbtacks Bram's busted open at this point. It's a hardcore match to kick off Hardcore Justice, what the, what the name indicates, but it's a good match. Bram would eventually uh, get the bat, get Janice, hit Abyss in the gut with it, pin Abyss, one, two, three, and Bram would pick up the win and defeat Abyss once again. Bram has Abyss's number. Bram, honestly, really good talent. Abyss is doing a good job putting him over here. Just a good push for Bram. I'm excited to see what happens. Bram, honestly, I would not be surprised if we see him as TNA World Heavyweight Champion in the future. He's got a bright future. I'm a big fan of him. So, this is a good feud so far. I'm guessing this is the end of the feud. I don't know, considering he's got Janice hostage. So, it's probably not the end of the feud. But, so far, the feud's been pretty good. I've enjoyed it. We'll see how things go from there. Bram picks up the win. Good way to open up the show. Next thing we have, we have EC3, Spud, Rockstar Spud, and Rhino head to the ring. They were talking about how they got arrested last week. EC3 said he spent some time in jail. He had some time to think, and he said it was Rhino's fault that Dixie got put through the table. He paid Rhino perfectly good money to protect her. He didn't do his job. Rhino says he'd rather be dirt poor than listen to EC3. He told EC3 to shove his money up his ass. EC3 would slap Rhino. He'd attack Rhino, and he would take Rhino out. So EC3 showing a, a more aggressive, vicious side in this segment to get EC3 over. So it seems like we're going to be seeing more of a aggressive vengeance of EC3 than usual in the next few months for Dixie Carter getting put through the table. So good segment here. Looks like the end of Rhino being with EC3 and, and uh, Spud. So we'll see. I'm guessing EC3 will feud with Rhino maybe. We'll see what happens. But decent segment. Good way to uh, show EC3's aggressiveness. Next thing we had, we had Samoa Joe versus Low Key for the X Division Championship. This match was good as well. I enjoyed it. It was a hyped up match. Overall, I was entertained. No complaints here. Good wrestling match. Good X Division action. Going into this match, Samoa Joe recently won the X Division Championship. I wasn't expecting him to drop it here, but there were certain points that you thought maybe, maybe Samoa Joe would drop it. At one point, Samoa Joe had the Boston Crab locked in. Loki would go for the key, cr key crusher, his finisher maneuver. Joe would counter. He'd eventually hit the muscle buster. For the one, two, three, Samoa Joe would defeat Loki and retain the X Division Championship. Samoa Joe, still your TNA X Division Champion. Good match here. Good stuff. Next, we have Mr. Anderson versus Samuel Shaw in an I Quit match. The match started backstage when Anderson was getting interviewed. It carried out to the ring. This match, honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of it because we've seen Anderson and Shaw feud before where they're feuding again, but this time with Gunner as a new addition to the feud. So I'm not too interested in this feud, to be perfectly honest. But I am more interested in Anderson and Gunner to see how that escalates. 
But this match was whatever. I wasn't a huge fan of it, to be perfectly honest. It was back and forth. Uh, Anderson would lock in the arm breaker. Moments later, Sam Shaw would eventually yell, he quits. Anderson picks up the win with a submission, with the arm bar. And uh, after the match, after Samuel Shaw says he quits, Anderson won't let go of his submission maneuver. Gunner gets in the ring, breaks it up, shoves Anderson. The two have a stare down. And it looks like the uncertainty and kind of trust between Anderson and Gunner are slowly fading away. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of these guys turned heel or Samuel Shaw just flat out turned heel in the next month or so which is what I've been expecting, but hey, who knows, maybe they'll have a different turn of events, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there, so whatever match, not too, nothing too special, I wasn't a huge fan of it, but whatever, we'll see how the feud goes. Next match we have, or next we have a segment between Team 3D, the Hardys, and the Wolves, Team 3D and the Hardys would come out, they said they had a plan backstage when they got interviewed, a new plan of sorts, the Hardys and Team 3D were talking about wanting to hold the TNA Tag Team Championships once again. They call out the Wolves. The Wolves come out here. They say it'd be cool for them to be... They said that uh, they'd want to have the accomplishments and accolades that Team 3D and the Hardys do. The Wolves said that. And uh, he ba they basically put the Hardys and Team 3D over. Davey said if they wanted a shot at these belts anytime, anywhere, they can have it. Later on in the night, we would find out from Kurt Angle backstage that in the next few weeks, over the course of the next few weeks, they're going to have a TNA Tag Team title series between the Hardys, Team 3D, and the Wolves. The first team to win two matches wins the series and the titles, and Kurt Angle said the winner of the match gets to pick the stipulation of the next match that they'd have. So, interesting, uh, fresh, new little uh, thing. So it's it's kind of complicated. I'd probably just prefer just three tag teams go at it, but hey, a new twist on the on the little to make it more interesting, make people keep tuning in. So no complaints really, just a creative, innovative way I guess to uh, book it. So TNA Tag Title Series coming up with three of the hottest tag teams in TNA right now. Next thing we had after that we had Gail Kim versus. Angelina Love, last knockout standing championship match. This match delivered on all cylinders. Good match here. I really enjoyed it. Once again, proving why the knockouts are better than the Divas, in my opinion. Just better wrestlers overall have better matches, have more time. You can argue, though, that the knockouts do get more time. But still, in my opinion, better matches. This match was good. They used various weapons, trash can lids, chairs, um... Velvet Sky, got, El, Velvet Sky played a role in this match for the beautiful people's ringside to support Angelina Love. She interfered a couple times. And uh, basically, Gail Kim would get hit with the Botox injection on the entrance ramp. She was about to hit Angelina Love with a chair. She'd get nailed with the Botox injection right in the face with the chair. And she'd get up at the 8 count. I thought for sure Angelina Love was going to take the knockouts title there. Gail Kim would eventually um, hit a butyl, uh, hit a uh, air raid crash onto the chair. It was almost like a Samoan job, but basically an air raid crash onto the chair below. There was a steel chair in the ring. Hit the air raid crash off the top rope. Angelina Love would not get up in time for the 10 count. Gail Kim retained the knockouts championship. A good knockouts title match here. Good stuff. Thumbs up there. Then we would have our main event of the evening. Also, a small side note, Dixie Carter was being interviewed bedside by Mike Tanay, just a segment they had taped earlier on a couple weeks before, it looked like, and she was just trying to sell her back injury. It was nothing special. I honestly was laughing because um, it, it, was just, it was just funny to me. And then the main event, the Six Sides of Steel, a match we haven't seen in ages because there's about a brief long three years four years that there hadn't been six sides and that's basically why but six sides of steel is back you had gunner versus magnus versus james storm versus austin aries versus bobby Roode versus eric young the winner of this match would become the official number one contender for the tna world heavyweight championship this match 
Honestly, I thought it could have gotten more time, but it was a good match overall. I enjoyed it. First one to escape the cage will earn a title shot against Lashley. Back and forth action. Both guys, all the guys in the ring would hit the in the steel cage would hit their finishers, do their finishing move sets, and it was just kind of all over the place. You'd have Eric Young and Bobby Roode being the last one standing. They'd both climb up the cage. They would both hop off and land on the floor at the same damn time. So a screwy finish here. Uh, Hebner, um, Brian Hebner said that it was, uh, I think he said it was, or whatever. He was on one side, said Eric Young or Roode landed first. Stifler, the other referee, was on the other side, said Rude or Young landed first. They couldn't figure it out. The show comes to a conclusion. We don't know who's the official number one contender for the TNA World Championship because Eric Young and Bobby Rude landed on the floor at the same damn time. Now, this is nothing to TNA. It was a perfectly good show. And TNA's had a, a really good episodes of impact over the course of the month month and a half and I've really enjoyed TNA as of late more than WWE right now this was a screwy finish that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth to end the show that's the only complaint I really have this is perfectly good in ring action but the screwy finishes it's always happens in wrestling where there's some some kind of screwy bullshit like I don't have a problem with the interference and stuff, but this shit, when you land at the same time, I mean, come on. And then leave us wondering who wins. I mean, I know they're doing this to see, so we'll tune in next week, so I guess marketing, but at the same damn time, I mean, come on. We should be promised a, a number one contender, then give us a fucking number one contender. That's the only thing I've got to say. That was my little rant. Overall, the episode was decent. We don't have a winner for the six sides of steel. It's either Eric Young or Rude. My guess is next week we'll have Eric Young versus Bobby Rude. In a singles match, the winner will be determined the number one contender. That's my guess. Next Wednesday, tune in to see who the number one contender is because we didn't find out tonight. Overall, Hardcore Justice. Mm, would I give it a thumbs up? I'm not going to give it an in the middle. I'm not giving it a thumbs down. I'm going to give it a little above in the middle but not a all the way thumbs up so overall grade I give this show six out of ten why because it just left a bad taste in my mouth honestly the show was a, had some good matches it delivered a six by my rating is just means it's it's average it wasn't terrible it wasn't great so six out of ten overall grade I give it an average score Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos and subscribe. More TNA videos and footage and content to return. Hope you enjoyed this video. RSC6414. Thanks for watching. Deuces.